another interesting uh, thing to do would be example part B. <coughs> in the same system, let's say each cell are, are occupying half a kilometer squared. <coughs> the area of the city is, uh, let's say, 28 kilometers squared. How many simultaneous calls cell is half a kilometer squared. So that reuse pattern, what's the area of that reuse pattern? 3.5. So it's 7 times 0.5 is 3.5 kilometers squared. So how many of these clusters, and let's just assume that it all fits nicely, but how many of these clusters uh, will cover the city? 8 is correct. So 28 kilometers divided by 3.5 is 8 clusters. 8 clusters contains how many cells? 56, 8 times 7. So each cell contains how many calls? 700. So 56 cells 700 half calls per cell is equal to 7 times 2 times 5 is 39,200. Is that right? Yeah. 39,200 calls. Okay, so that that is not an unreasonable number of calls for a city. Um, let's just take a second and think about how big is 28 kilometers squared. Um, so what's the square root of that? Somewhere between 5 and 6. So um, a city that's between 5 and 6 kilometers on the side, probably, uh, probably like a little smaller than Ottawa, maybe? Yeah, you'd be able to walk each side of the city in about an hour. That's right. So um, maybe like uh, Quebec City or Winnipeg or something like that. I had uh, a question about the previous example. Yes. So you have the total number of 98 megahertz. Yes. How would you count? Like, do you calculate the amount of uh, half calls allowed if you were just to you know, treat it as one cell? Like in the example we have, the tower from the same time. Yes. Um, so if you had okay, if you had the tower on top of the CN tower, um, and that was covering the city of Toronto, how many half calls would you have? Well, basically, it'd be 98 megahertz divided by 20 kilohertz per call, which would end up being uh, 4900. 49, that's right. So basically, the the city, the size of Toronto, we would have to serve with 4900 simultaneous calls. So in this case, the, the advantage here is because I because I partitioned this into cells, I have eight clusters in which each cluster uses the entire frequency, um, the entire set of frequencies. So that means I, I get eight times the number of calls. So the key thing to notice here, and we'll actually cover this in a second, is that this number is actually chosen arbitrarily. So because you can, there's no if. Um, if you think this number is too big, you can boost the power of the base station. Or excuse me, uh, the opposite. If you think this number is too small, you can boost the power of the base station. If you think it's too big, you can shrink the power of the base station. And you can vary this however you like. 
So you'll notice that because that appears over here, it gives us the area of the area in which I can reuse all the frequencies. If I shrink this, because that's in the denominator, I can increase the number of clusters. So basically, I can have as many clusters as I like. It just depends on how much money I'm willing to spend on base stations. Okay, um, as an aside, let's, uh, so 0.5 kilometers square, about how big is that? Is there a question back here? Uh, well, just following up on his question, in terms of certain areas that are going to have a lot more calls than other areas, is it, is it possible to design areas that get more of the bandwidth yes. based on their location? Yes, so what you do there like is you downtown do cells versus the next street over that's really dead. That's exactly, exactly what you do. So um, it turns out you can do what's called microcells. So uh, in that case, let's say, um, let's say here's your area, and cell five turns out to be downtown, and all of these are sort of the suburbs surrounding downtown. What you could do is instead of having a single cell here, you could have a complete reuse cluster just arrange it so that the power on the edges here, uh, arrange it so that these frequencies are not used at the edges. Uh, the power within these, uh, these cells would be reduced so that they wouldn't necessarily interfere with anything surrounding them. And you could, you could basically arbitrarily increase the amount, of the, the, the amount of bandwidth there simply by shrinking the size of the cell. So it's, it's not necessarily true that the size of the cell must be uniform. Um, if you have a particular So we're going to talk about, I'm not sure if we'll get to it today, but we will talk about GSM. And in GSM, what uh, the GSM uses a combination of FDMA and TDMA. So you will be allocated a particular frequency, and within that particular frequency, you will be allocated a particular frame. And that's the, that, that's, that's the nature of circuit switching, is that that frame is yours. So each time it comes up, you, you are the exclusive user. You go from frame to cell one. Uh, is there a point of time where you're actually using up both of these frequencies? Okay, that's a good question. Um, it depends. So for GSM by itself uses what's called hard handoff. The hard handoff, the first link is severed before the second link is used. In that case, you're only using one uh, one, one, <coughs> one frame at a time. Um, in some other systems, CDMA systems usually do this. Um, you can have what's called soft handoff. Simultaneously using, we talked a little bit about this uh, for data networks, but uh, you're simultaneously using uh, the same, not the same, but, uh, but a channel to the first base station and a channel to the second base station. And that usually only occurs right when you're in the vicinity of 